Hey everybody, uh, so in this video we're going to look at managing just a typical capacitor application using Git. Uh, so we're going to look at first just creating an application with the capacitor uh, integrated and then we're going to push that to a Git repository. We'll be using uh, GitHub to do that. And then we're also going to delete the project and then reclone it and pull it down from Git as well. So I will be assuming a kind of basic level of familiarity with using Git uh, in this video. Uh, but even if you don't know much about Git, uh, as long as you have it available on your computer, uh, you should be able to just follow along with this video and do everything I'm doing anyway. And so the main sort of goal behind this uh, of uploading our code to GitHub is to allow it one uh, to be backed up and so we can have a version control and we can jump between uh, versions of our application. We can go back to older commits that we've uh, uploaded, uh, but also to share that code with other people easily. And the reason I want to talk about Capacitor specifically is because uh, some of the files and folders in there, uh, people I've seen kind of assuming that some of them aren't supposed to be committed to GitHub or uh, Bitbucket or wherever you're putting those files. Uh, but it's actually all set up by default to commit everything you need. So you don't actually really need to change anything or do anything special uh, for capacitor applications. But I just want to walk through doing that and explaining you know, what should be uh, uploaded to GitHub. So we'll just get started by just creating a new project and it doesn't have to be a stencil project. That's just what I'm using in this case. So I'm going to create a new project now by running npm init stencil. And of course you could do this with a project that you already have built. I'll just use the Ionic PWA and we'll just call this uh, stencil capacitor test. Okay, so that application's generated now. So I'm just going to change into that. And now we want to get capacitor integrated with this, of course. So I'm just going to pull up the capacitor documentation now and we'll run the commands to get that installed. And we'll add the iOS and Android platforms as well. Okay, so I've got the docs up here. We can just go to the installation section and you can see these are the commands you need to run to install capacitor in your application. Uh, we just need to install capacitor core and the capacitor CLI. So we will do that now. So we'll just paste those commands in here. Okay, so once our capacitor is installed, we still do need to initialize capacitor and we need to add the platforms as well. Uh, I don't actually have a build of this application yet, uh, of my stencil application. So I'm just going to run npm run build, uh, but that's just to create a production version of my stencil app. This doesn't really have anything in particular to do with capacitor. It's just we're building the, uh, the code that capacitor is going to uh, pull into the native projects. So I'll just let that run. Okay, so now we have our build, which is, let's take a look in the files here. Uh, you can see we have the www folder, www folder, and that's going to contain the build of our application, and that's what capacity uses. So what we're going to do now is just initialize capacity using the mpx cap init command. And if you are using something like Angular and you're using the Ionic CLI, there are Ionic specific commands for that. So uh, you could use the Ionic cap add commands, but it's basically the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we'll run mpx cap init and we've got to give our application a name and we're just going to call it again, stencil capacitor test. We're going to use the uh, bundle ID or package ID. Uh, I usually just use com.joshmaroney.example for this. Obviously you should use something else. All right, so that's initialized now, and now we're just going to add the Android and iOS platforms. So I'll run mpx cap add, uh, oops, I missed the cap, mpx cap add Android. And there are additional setup steps for this as well. So if you haven't used Capacitor before, you might also need to take a look at the required dependencies section so you can set up Android and iOS correctly on your machine. All right, now I'll run mpx uh, cap add uh, iOS as well. Okay, so now we have both the platforms added. We've got capacitor initialized and everything's pretty much ready to go at this point. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is open up this project and we're just going to look through the files and folders. And specifically, we're going to focus on some stuff that will and won't be uh, sent up to GitHub when we push it. Okay, so I've got the project open in Visual Studio Code uh, right now. And if we look over in the, the left side here, you can see 
you know, the, all the project files. We have a build folder here that we created before, uh, but we also have our Android and iOS folders. And this is what has been, oh, I definitely don't want to move that. Uh, our Android and iOS folders, and this is what has been created by Capacitor for us. So these are actually, my God, my mouse is freaking out or something. <laughs> what is happening? Okay, I have an Apple Magic mouse, but apparently it's a little two magics. It's trying to move everything around the screen. I don't know what just happened there. That was a little scary. Uh, hopefully I didn't actually mess anything up there, but we have the Android and iOS folders here. That's what Capacitor added. Uh, and these are actually the native uh, project uh, files. So uh, you might also hear these referred to as source artifacts. So they are the native project files and we can edit these. So we might come into our Android folder, for example, and we might want to change some of the native code in there. Maybe we want to set up some plugins or something. Uh, and so these are the folders that people might assume, maybe especially if you're familiar with something like Cordova, uh, you might feel like you shouldn't be pushing these up to Git or to GitHub. Uh, but you do need to include these. Uh, and so when someone comes to clone your project or the person you're sharing this project with, they will have all of those changes you've made to the native files if you've made any. So if we just open up the uh, git ignore file, so we can see what is and isn't being included. Uh, and so this, again, I mentioned before, this is all handled automatically for you. So you don't need to do any special configuration for uploading to git, uh, or uploading with git. Uh, it's all just handled automatically. I'm just pointing out some things so you don't you know, worry about it. Um, and so we have things like the node modules here, which isn't included because those are going to be installed when we run npm install and we clone the project and I'll show that uh, later. Uh, but basically we already have all the files that we don't want, all the files and folders we don't want pushed up to GitHub. We have this git ignore file, which is going to stop those from being uploaded. So. We're not uploading the www folder because again, that can just be built locally. And same with these other folders, files and folders, they don't need to be committed to Git. And if we also take a look, say inside of the Android uh, folder here, uh, you actually find another Git ignore file. And this is for the Android folder specifically. And so there's a bunch of stuff in here that we don't want uploaded to uh, GitHub or wherever. Uh, but again, this is all handled automatically. So these git ignore files are included by default. It'll ignore all the stuff that doesn't need to be uploaded and it will upload the stuff that does need to be uploaded. And again, same goes with uh, the iOS, uh, iOS platform here. Uh, you can see the git ignore folder here. Oh, the file is smaller than the Android one, but this is the stuff we don't want to send up to GitHub. Okay, so with that sort of explanation out of the way, Basically, all of that rambling was to say that you can just create your capacitor project and you can just push it to GitHub or wherever straight away. You don't need to do any special configuration unless, of course, you've made some changes or you've added some files that you want ignored or you want pushed up to GitHub, then you might need to do something. But for a default project, uh, it's all configured for you. So now what we need to do if we want to push up to GitHub is we're going to need to create a repository. Uh, so I will do that now. So I've just got my GitHub account up now. Again, you could use Bitbucket or whatever kind of Git platform you want to use. And so I'm just gonna go to new repository. We'll just call this um, stencil capacitor test as well. You can set it to public or private. I'm not really gonna go into that sort of stuff in this video. Uh, click create repository. And then you get the instructions on how to um, push this up. So we can always check the status of our Git repository if we run Git status. And you see right now we get fatal, not a Git repository. Uh, so that means this hasn't been uh, added yet. So what we can do now is say git init, and that's going to create that repository for us. So again, now if we run git status, we should see that we do have a repository now, nothing's been added to it. We can add all of the files uh, that we need to push up for our project by running git add uh, dot, which means git add all, uh, but that's going to still ignore the, the files that shouldn't be uploaded. 
And then we need to commit those files. So we say git commit and we can supply a message describing what is happening in this commit. So this is just the initial commit. As you do more work in the future, you would run git add again to add those files. And then you'd create another commit message. Maybe you'd say git commit m added new component or something like that. So we will commit that. And now usually at this point, you could just say git push and push your changes up to GitHub. Uh, but to initialize it for the first time, you do actually need to set this remote uh, origin here so it knows where to push that code to. So we can just copy that line, just git remote add origin, and then the URL. Of course, you shouldn't use this URL. You should use the URL for your own repository and just copy that next command as well to push up your code. Okay, so that is push now again. Let's just run and get status, see what's going on. It says your run is up to date and it's nothing to, uh, nothing to commit, working tree clean. So that is good. And now if we come back into here, we can see that our code has been uploaded. And again, we have those Android and iOS folders there. And so obviously right now I haven't made any changes to these, so it's not going to matter. And often, you know, you might not make any changes to the Android or iOS platforms in your capacitor projects. Uh, but if you do, it's important those changes are there for other people cloning your project. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to delete that uh, project that I just created, and then we're going to re-download it. We're gonna clone it from GitHub and then get everything set up and working again. So I'm gonna jump back into the command line now, I'm going to go up a folder and I'll run the scary rm rf command, which recursively deletes files and folders. Uh, if you are using this command, do be careful with it because uh, you don't want to delete the wrong thing. I'm going to delete stencil capacitor test. You can also just delete it through a normal finder window if you prefer to do that. Okay, so that project is gone from my computer now and now I want to get it back. So what we can do here is just clone this repository. If we, uh, if we click on the clone or download it will give us the clone URL here. And what we can do is say git clone, paste that URL. And you see it says cloning into stencil capacitor test. So that's just going to create that folder again for us. And it's going to download the project there. Okay, so once that is done, we can jump back into that folder again now that it exists once more. And we can take a look at what's uh, there by default. And we don't have the node modules folder right now. And there's some other stuff that isn't going to be in there either because that wasn't pushed up to GitHub. So what we need to do at this point is run npm install. And that's going to install all of our missing dependencies. It's going to create that node modules folder. And so basically whatever's listed in package.json, it's going to reset up uh, for us locally now. So again, if we just check the files and folders in there, you can see we have that node modules uh, folder now. Uh, we still don't have a www folder uh, because that local uh, production build wasn't pushed to GitHub either. So to recreate that again, we would just run npm run build. Or if you're using a, a different framework, you would have a different command to run. But yeah, just run whatever command you need to generate a production version of your application. Okay, so that's done. And we shouldn't need to do anything else at this point. We don't need to reinitialize a capacitor now we don't need to re-add the platforms because they are already there. Uh, so if we wanted to say, uh, open up our native Android project and run that, what we could do at this point is, well, first we would say mpx cat sync. And what that is going to do is uh, copy our build, that www folder we just created. That's going to copy that code over into the native project. It's also gonna check for any missing plugins that haven't been added to the native project yet. And so basically by running mpx, mpx cap sync, it's just getting capacitor ready, uh, pulling in everything, refreshing everything. And once we've done that, we can say mpx cap uh, open Android or open iOS. And in this case, it's going to open Android Studio for us. Okay, so all of Android Studio is all loading up now. Uh, the project is starting to sync. So it's gonna run that Gradle sync and everything's uh, going to be set up. I can probably take a few minutes to run, so we'll let that happen. Okay, so the project is finished syncing now. You see we've got this warning here, but that's just a warning, that's not an issue. Uh, but it says the sync has completed successfully. So basically at this point we could just run the application and 
test it out. Do we want make changes, resync things, rerun things, uh, push stuff back to GitHub and be happy. Uh, so just for a little bit of extra fun and to make sure things are actually working, uh, let's boot up an emulator and try to run this. So I'll just click the play button on here and we will use one of these devices. Might as well use the Pixel 3 XL device I created before for testing. So we'll try to load that up on this one. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to boot up. Okay, so it took a while for the emulator to actually boot up and load, but uh, it's finished now. And you can see we have our stencil application with the Ionic web components uh, running on the screen now. Yeah, so we can successfully sort of click around on the application, all seems to be working. And so uh, remember that we did delete the project entirely from our computer, and then we pulled it back down from GitHub again, reset everything up, and as you can see, everything appears to be working just fine. So that is a general process for how you can manage a capacitor application, how you can push it to Git, pull it uh, back down from Git as well, get everything set back up again. Uh, as I mentioned, there's not really anything special you need to do, especially in terms of what you're pushing. That's all just set up for you uh, automatically. The only thing you really need to remember is that when you pull the project back down, you need to run npm install to install those missing dependencies and you'll also need to run uh, a build of your application and run that mpx cat sync command to uh, transfer that build over to your uh, capacitor application. And I haven't shown you uh, using Xcode in this video, but it's the same idea. Just run mpx cat open iOS and then you could use uh, Xcode to run your application as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please do leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.